Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're looking at using a render farm to make our Redshift renders even faster in Cinema 4D. This tutorial was brought to you by CG Shortcuts Pro Membership, where members get access to all of our premium training and tutorials, loads of time-saving assets, an online community, and direct help and support to learn Cinema 4D faster. Check it out at cgshortcuts.com forward slash membership or over on Patreon. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So this is a bit of a follow up to last week's video about rendering faster in Redshift. And I'll leave a link to that video down below if you'd like to check it out. But if you'd like to make your renders go even faster and meet your deadlines sooner, we're going to walk you through the process today. And there are quite a few render farms out there, but in our experience, the best one for rendering in Cinema 4D and Redshift is Drop and Render. As you can see, they support pretty much every recent version of Cinema 4D and Redshift, along with all the popular plugins out there. Plus, they offer 10 euros free credit to get you started as well. So I'll leave a link to that down below if you'd like to give them a try. So once you've joined up, you just need to download and install the Drop and Render Cloud Manager from your dashboard here for either Mac or Windows. And that's also going to automatically install the Cinema 4D plugin as well to whatever version you've currently got installed. And with that done, let's hop into Cinema 4D and fire off a render. So I've set up a little promo scene here for our CG Shortcuts Pro membership, which I'd now like to render off. It currently takes about two minutes to render each frame locally on my RTX 3090, which will mean a pretty long render over a duration of 408 frames. So I think this scene is definitely a good one to send off to a render farm so I can free up my machine and hop straight onto another job. So let's take a look at how easy that is to set up. If you're using dynamics in your scene, which I did in this one, it's always a good practice to cache or bake your simulations. And this is probably even more important if you're sending things off to a render farm or to another computer. I actually baked all of my objects to Alembic files, which is probably the best option for this kind of thing. And to do that, all you need to do is right click on an object and choose bake as Alembic or bake as Alembic and delete if you wanna replace your dynamic objects with the Alembic files, which is exactly what I did here. Then with that all sorted, let's take a look at our Redshift render settings. And I've got my unified sampling threshold set to 0.01, which should be fine for this scene. Then under globals, I'm also using an ACES color space workflow, which is also supported by drop and render. And we recently did a video covering everything you need to know about ACES in Redshift over in CG Shortcuts Pro as well, if you do need a bit more information about that. Then I'd also like to render out some AOVs as well, which is also supported by the render farm. And you can see I've already set up a beauty pass, which is set to render out separate passes for all of my light groups. And I've also got a cryptomat pass for if I need to isolate any of my objects in post as well, which should also work on the farm. So all we need to do in here is to save the mode to multi-pass, which will allow us to see a preview of our render later on over in the drop and render dashboard which we'll look at in just a second. But let's close this window for now and we'll take a look at the save menu. If you use tokens and relative paths for your image output, that won't actually work on a render farm. But all we need to do instead is to click here and choose the location you'd like to send your frames to. And I think this looks like a good place. So we'll just give that a name as well and hit save. And this will now be the directory where all the frames will be downloaded after our scene has finished rendering on the farm. So we'll just copy this up here as well. And then under output, I usually like to render out a few test frames first, just to make sure that what we've rendered on the farm matches what we see here in the render view. So I'll just set this to render up to frame three. We should be enough frames to see if there's any problems with our render. So with that, I think we're ready to go. So let's close this and we'll go and find our drop and render plugin, which should be here under the extensions menu. And there it is. So let's fire that up. And we'll start by checking our scene, which we'll go through and make sure there's no errors detected before we upload this. And it looks like we're all good. So all we need to do now is to start the cloud manager, which opens the app we downloaded earlier. And we can manage our renders from here if we like but I prefer to use the online dashboard. So I'll just minimize that for now. And all that remains is to submit the project. And you can also choose your priority here as well. So if you're not in a huge hurry, you can use the Sapphire option, which is a bit more cost-effective, but also slower to render. 
or if you need your frames as fast as possible, you can use the diamond option, which costs a little bit more. I'm happy to let this render while I work on another project. So I'll save some money and just leave this set to Sapphire and we'll submit our project. Then I'll head over to the dashboard at dropandrender.com where we can view our remaining credits and keep an eye on our render progress. And we can see an expanded view of this under the render monitor tab here, where we can see our job has almost finished uploading. And as soon as that's done, it'll go into the queue and start rendering as soon as possible, depending on your priority. And if we click into this, here's where our completed frames will appear. So I'll let this do its thing and come back when the render's done. There's also an iOS or Android app you can use to keep an eye on your render if you do need to step away from your desk, which is also quite handy. And you'll receive an email notification as soon as your job's done as well. And now that those test frames have completed, we can see how many credits we've used so far and a breakdown of the cost and render time per frame. And we get this nice little preview window as well, which allows us to check our render while we wait for the frames to download. And it actually looks like those frames have downloaded already. So we'll take a look in that directory that we chose before, which now has our completed frames and a folder for all the AOV passes as well. So at this point, I like to hop over to After Effects and make sure everything looks right once we've comped everything back together again. And it looks like all of our lighting passes are going together nicely. And our crypto mat looks good as well. So I think our test was successful. And it's a good idea to play through your frames to make sure there's no swimming textures or anything like that. But I think this looks good. So let's head back to Cinema 4D. And now that we're happy with the render, let's go back to the settings and change this to render all of the remaining frames, which is going to be from four onward. And we'll close this and resubmit our project. And when we resubmit, it won't actually resend all the textures and related assets in our project, which could take a while to re-upload. Instead, it'll just send the updated Cinema 4D file only, which should be nice and fast. So here we are an hour later and all of our frames are now complete. And we can see the total cost of the render, which you should be able to bill your client for. And we can now see a full render preview as well. So all we need to do now is wait for the frames to finish downloading and we'll hop back into After Effects for our final output. And here is our final render. And it's really as easy as that. So next time you're worried about meeting a deadline, you can always try using a render farm, which has definitely saved me many, many times before. So if you'd like to give Drop and Render a try and get started with some free credits, I'll leave a link to that down below. So that's about it for this one. All the best with your Redshift rendering and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. If you learn anything from this tutorial, you're guaranteed to learn loads more with CG Shortcuts Pro Membership. Check it out over at cgshortcuts.com. In the meantime though, here's some more videos you might like.